Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Today I thought I'd have a look at Elite with the Oculus Rift. Now you've probably noticed that the Oculus is currently on sale. You can get the headset along with the touch controllers for £400 or $400 depending on where you live. So that's actually a pretty big saving. And I've seen all over YouTube and I've seen a lot of people on the forums as well asking whether or not it's worth getting the Oculus Rift for Elite Dangerous. So I thought it a good opportunity to come back here and have a look at what the game's like with the headset. Now, I was fortunate enough to have Oculus send me both the Rift and the touch controllers, but had they not, I think that now I'd be seriously considering making the purchase because I've long been waiting for the price to drop. For the video then, I'm going to have a look at a bit of the UI, then we'll have a look at some combat, and then we'll have a look at some exploration. So here's a bit of footage I captured earlier, and I apologise for the quality of the audio, I actually used a mic built into the Rift. Now that's only for about a minute or so, and then I'll be right back. So then, here we are in my Vulture, and what I'm going to do is give you a very quick uh, overview of how the Oculus actually functions in here. We'll start with having a look at the Starport Services menu. Now, I don't know how well this actually comes across in the video, again the video is going to be fairly low resolution, because, uh, well, this is captured from a secondary window on the display, and that's only in 720p. And I might be able to upscale it a bit and give it a slight improvement in quality. But here is the Station Services UI. Now, this hologram is around about this distance in front of me, and I don't know how well you can actually see my hands there. And this actually curves out. It's actually a bit further in front. You can see my toes down there. Now the UI is slightly in front of that, about a foot in front. And it actually curves around. So it's very panoramic and a complete curved screen. Now most of the UI actually is like this, with the exception of the commodities market, which is flat. But this is a very large screen, equivalent probably of a 100-inch TV screen, I'd say. So let's come back out of that. And... Uh, when we have a look at the right panels and the left panels, they work as normal. Now you can have these set to activate when you actually look at them, they can actually come up. But I've only got them set to activate when you actually activate them. Because it's a little bit nuisance, otherwise when you're looking around the ship, they keep displaying and closing. So, yeah. Again, scale. The Vulture's actually a gorgeous ship. You can see the co-pilot seat up there. Very nice uh, field of view when you're in here. So let's go out and get into a uh, resource extraction site and we'll do some combat. So I was still in the same system as the recent community goal, the one with the gorgeous looking ring system. And it's just a well because this was absolutely stunning to fly around in VR. Now you may notice a few frame rate issues here. Please keep in mind this is not on the Oculus Rift itself, this is purely down to a capture. When you're trying to capture footage from the Oculus, you can't capture directly from the headset. Instead what happens is that a secondary screen is mirrored to your monitor, and it's this screen that you actually capture. Now Elite Dangerous is a pretty demanding game when it comes to having a VR setup. I'm using a GTX 980 here, and to be perfectly honest, it isn't really enough. I've had to set the uh, settings, the graphical settings, down to medium, and even then, there are a few frame rate issues. Again, the ones that you do notice here are not down to the setup or the Rift itself, it's purely down to capture. But do keep in mind, if you are thinking about getting an Oculus Rift, then you'll probably want a GTX 980 or comparable at the absolute minimum, and something better would certainly be an improvement. So, as you saw at the start of the video, and as you can see now, the Oculus Rift, just like the HTC Vive, has full positional tracking. So that means that you, wherever you turn your head, wherever you lean, the headset or the in-game avatar will move with you. And that includes being able to step up and walk around the bridges as well, which is a very nice touch. When it comes to a combat and elite dangerous, then VR is a huge advantage. Much better than a regular monitor, and even more of an advantage than regular head tracking. This of course because you are fully immersed within the environment, so you know exactly what's going on all around you at all times. There's nothing artificial going on here, it's simply the same as interacting with the environment in the real world. You just look around to see what's going on around you. And yeah, even here you can see immense detail, the sense of scale as the uh, ring systems disappear off as far as the eye can see, 
and the sense of distance and scale of the ships is very, very impressive. And yes, for some reason I was flying around here in combat with my cargo hold open. I hadn't noticed at the time, didn't notice until after I destroyed the anaconda here. <laughs> at any rate, one of the things I'd been really concerned about with getting a VR setup was everything I'd been hearing about the glare. Now both the Oculus Rift and the Vive use Fresnel lenses and this does cause some glare with high contrast scenes and with the Elite Dangerous being set in space against a black backdrop it does mean that nearly all the scenes do have high contrast and essentially what happens is that you get reflection that comes across as a glare on the lenses. It is noticeable but it's not as bad as I was expecting, in fact it's not anywhere near as bad as I was expecting. And right here is one of my favourite activities in Elite Dangerous with VR, just flying around and chilling. One comment you'll often see in relation to Elite Dangerous is the fact that many people feel everything looks so small. And this is very, very true, things do look small, and that's simply because scale and size are impossible to judge within space. After all, there's very little to use as a point of reference, yet things are extremely different when it comes to using VR. For example, you can see just how large the docking hatch is here. In fact, it's akin to driving a car through a football field. And inside the stations is very, very impressive. It truly looks like a vast distance all the way to the back of the station. And when you're hovering up above your pads, it looks like a long distance down, that's for sure. And this really is the thing about virtual reality and elite. It gives you a much different perspective and a much different sense of appreciation for all the environments, whether it's station interiors, whether it's outposts, or whether it's even planetary settlements. And the one thing that looks perhaps the most impressive of all are the new Thargoid structures. Landing at one of those places feels like landing somewhere in a Ridley Scott movie. The sense of ambience, the sense of immersion is unrivaled. But that's not the only thing that's unrivaled. There's also situational awareness, and that's not just limited to combat, it covers pretty much everything right across the board. And there's another thing here, you can actually target everything you actually look at, no matter whereabouts it actually is. Look up at it and select the target screen and that will become the active target. Very, very handy, very, very useful. One of the areas on the game that really does cause performance issues is down on planetary surfaces and you notice this as soon as you get up close to some of the planets. It's the main reason I've had to set my VR setup to a medium settings on Elite and it's one of the reasons I'd recommend having a better performance graphics card than a GTX 980. But if you have got something better than that then I highly doubt you'll see any frame rate issues at all. But if you're limited to a 960, a 970 or 980 or equivalent then, well, you may see a bit of frame rate reduction, but it's really not too much of a detriment to the game. And the reason for this is Oculus Rift's asynchronous time warp. And what this means is that regardless of what's going on within the game itself, the head tracking will always maintain a maximum frame rate. And that means when you turn your head, you'll always get smooth tracking. And that, of course, severely reduces any motion sickness. Now, I don't get any motion sickness in Elite, uh, certainly not when flying around in the ships anyway. I do get a bit of motion sickness when using the SRV though. Flying over planets is a truly amazing experience. And if you come to places like this with a high speed uh, ship, you're really going to have a wonderful experience. Now, I'm certainly not covering everything in the game. It's far too difficult to go around everywhere and absolutely show what everywhere looks like, especially when considering on the video anyway, you're still limited to a 2D perspective of everything. But the point really is to try and explain what it's like. And well, for VR, the main thing is the sense of immersion and the sense of scale. And for both of those, I'd say that Elite Dangerous is probably one of the best titles on the market right now. I regularly see people say that once they've played Elite in VR, they find it very hard to go back to a regular monitor. And that's something I certainly agree with. But that said, there are a couple of limitations. The resolution isn't quite as high as I would like and just sometimes the headset does get a little bit too hot, especially when the weather is as warm as it is right now in the UK. But even then, the headset itself is pretty comfortable to wear. And whilst I said the resolution isn't as quite as high as I would like, it's certainly nowhere near low enough to cause any problems. You can read all the text in the game, even at the smallest of texts. And if you've got a setup capable of super sampling, then you're going to have an even better experience. So, bottom line then, 
is VR worth it for Elite Dangerous? Well, it's certainly an experience unlike anything else, and like I say, when you do try it, you'll be hesitant to go back to a monitor again. That said, I'm always reluctant to go out and say to anyone, go spend £400, £500 or whatever the price, because it is a significant amount of money. Yet with the current price reduction of the Rift, it's certainly the best time ever to get into virtual reality, especially if you already have a PC that's capable of supporting it. The biggest downside for me, and perhaps the only one, is I find it very difficult to have prolonged play sessions. The headset itself is very comfortable and I actually wear glasses with it without any sort of problem, but it does get very hot. Even still though, VR is an amazing thing and playing Elite Dangerous in virtual reality is probably the greatest gaming experience I've ever had. Even the simple ability to sit here on an alien world looking up at an alien sky is truly unlike anything else. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.